Last year, I went to Venezuela. It was my first time. And I met with President Nicolas Maduro. And I said to him, if you have the election that you plan to have, it will not be credible. And around the world, you'll find the United States and many other nations will reject the outcome. You've got to open up the process. Stop putting your political opponents in jail. Have a real election, a free election. Venezuela needs it, not just from a constitutional viewpoint, but your economy's in shambles. And if you want the world to join you in rebuilding the Venezuelan economy, you have to be the credible leader, and you can't be if you go through with this election as planned. That was my speech. It didn't work. He had the election as he had planned it. He made sure that his opponents were in, under house arrest or in jail. He fixed the vote and ended up declaring himself a winner, and no one accepted it. And so across the world, you find this resistance to his leadership. There are some 70,000 people from Venezuela in the United States. They are here on visitor's visas, work visas, student visas, similar capacities. They are being asked now to return to Venezuela. But look, listen to the circumstances. In Venezuela, we know that it's not safe for Americans to visit. Senator Menendez has spoken to this issue. He's joining me in this effort today. We are warning Americans it is unsafe to visit Venezuela, but we're telling the Venezuelans who are in the United States they have to go back. What we're asking for is temporary protected status for these Venezuelans to be able to stay in the United States during the pendency of this uh, contest that's going on about the future of that nation. People are literally starving to death in Venezuela. They have no medicine. It's in the worst possible situation. How can we in good conscience say to these Venezuelans who are in the United States, you have to return? So the purpose of my effort today on the floor is to say that we should discharge from the Judiciary Committee legislation that allows these Venezuelans to stay here while we have declared it so dangerous in their home country. It is a rational and thoughtful thing to do, though sadly the Trump administration has sent me a letter saying they don't approve of it. Well, it's time for Congress to act. It's time for the Senate to act, and I'm going to make my formal motion at this point because Senator Lee has uh, come to the floor. Um, Madam President, as if in legislative session, I ask unanimous consent that the Judi Judiciary Committee be discharged from further consideration of H.R. 549 and the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration, further that the bill be considered read a third time and passed, and the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Madam President. Senator from Utah. Uh, Madam President, I reserve the right to object. I have to raise a couple of observations here. It's important to note that this bill was passed by the House of Representatives Thursday night. Uh, we just received the paperwork from the House of Representatives yesterday. This was a bill that did not pass unanimously in the House of Representatives. Far from it. There were at least 158. Uh, uh, Republicans who voted against it. There are a number of my colleagues here in the Senate who, like me, would like to see this and many other bills considered, but would like also the opportunity adequately to review the legislation as passed and to propose amendments and have those amendments voted on it. Uh, so passing this bill right now without that opportunity uh, to review it to propose amendments and have those considered, and then just passing this unanimously is not the way we ought to be passing this legislation. I'm happy to work with my distinguished colleague and, uh, and my, my revered friend from Illinois in moving in that direction, uh, but we're not ready to pass this by unanimous consent right now. We've got amendments to propose. So on that basis, I object. Objection is heard. Thank you, Madam President. I want to thank my colleague from Utah, though I'm sorry that he objected to my request. Why are we moving so quickly on this? Because it's a matter of life and death. That's why. Why have we decided this is such an emergency nature, a na uh, a nature of this process that the House has moved on this already? Because literally, people who are forced to return to Venezuela may face death. And that's why we're moving on this as quickly as we are. I want to thank the House of Representatives for passing this measure. It's time for the Senate to act, and we certainly have the time on the floor to achieve that. 
As I mentioned, if you go to Venezuela, as I did last year, you can see literally on the streets the impact of this disintegration of their economy and the problems that they're facing. I visited a children's hospital in Caracas, and it was heartbreaking for the medical staff to sit down at a table and to tell me they didn't have the basic medicines that we find in our medicine chest at home or in the clinics of America when it came to treating these children. They did not have antibiotics. They didn't have cancer drugs. The economy is disintegrating before our eyes in Venezuela. And these people, Venezuelans in the United States, students and others, are saying they'd like to remain in the United States and stay here until it's more stable in their country. Historically, there were no questions asked. We did that. We've done it over and over again. But under this administration, whenever the word immigrant comes into the conversation, they freeze. The same Trump administration that has told us the Maduro regime is unacceptable and that we have to get rid of it because of the terrible things that are happening, that the people of Venezuela should have a free election to decide their leader, this same administration will not help the Venezuelans who say that they're fearful of heading home to a country that is so dangerous. Let me read what this administration, which refuses to give temporary protected status, says about people who may want to visit in, uh, from the United States to Venezuela. To me, it tells a whole story. Here's what the Trump State Department says about Venezuela today. Advisory to American citizens, do not travel to Venezuela due to crime, civil unrest, poor health infrastructure, and arbitrary arrest and detention of U.S. citizens. Violent crimes such as homicide, armed robbery, kidnapping, and carjacking is common. There are shortages of food, electricity, water, medicine, and medical supplies throughout much of Venezuela. Those are the words of the Trump administration about this country of Venezuela. And when I asked that those who are Venezuelan in our country not be forced to return to this condition, there's an objection not only from my friend, the Republican senator from Utah, but also from the Trump administration. Now, make no mistake, if temporary protected status is granted, that does not mean we won't ask any questions of the Venezuelans here. They will have to go through a criminal background check. If there's a dangerous person, they're gone, period. No questions. They're gone. And that's the way it should be. But for those, for example, in my state who are university students, who have their student visas coming to an end, they are saying me, to me, Senator Durbin, will you allow me to stay in the United States until it's safe in my country? Is that an unreasonable request? If it were Americans in similar plights and places around the world, wouldn't we say give them a break, give them a chance to stay in a safe place? I'll, I'll close, and I want to defer to my friend from New Jersey, Senator Menendez, on this issue. When I went to Venezuela last year, in Caracas, I had a meeting. It was a dinner meeting, and it was an unusual one because it was with six members of their General Assembly who are opponents of President Maduro, who is currently the leader in that country. These opposition leaders opposed him, and their lives were at stake because of it. We had dinner in a restaurant. It was an unusual dinner. It was upstairs in a back room, and the door was closed so that no one could see us. There were six of them, and they said to me, if you come back next year, Senator, two of us will have been deported, two of us will be in prison, and two of us will have disappeared. That's what happens to the opposition in Venezuela if you happen to oppose President Maduro. It is that dangerous. One of those six was a man named Juan Guaido. I met him that night for the first time. Little did I know that he would step up, as he did several months ago, and put his life and his family's life on the line to say, I think Venezuela needs new leadership. Exceptional courage on his part. I met him then. I've met his wife since. They are literally risking their lives for the country. They understand how dangerous it is. All I ask for today on the floor is for those Venezuelans who wish to stay here in safety until this political scenario plays out, if they're allowed to stay here, that's all I was asking for, temporary protected status. I'm sorry that Senator Lee objected. He did note, though, that in some period of time, I hope very soon, he would reconsider that uh, position and give us a chance to provide this safety for the people 
Venezuelans who are visiting here in the United States. Because he's here and been such a great ally of mine in this effort, I'd like to yield the floor to my friend from New Jersey, Senator Menendez.